The confrontation over raising the national debt ceiling consumed Washington for much of 2011. Now the issue has reemerged. It was raised at a White House meeting today and sparked a new war of words in Congress. The issue here is the debt. Six, almost $16 trillion worth of debt, a $1.3 trillion budget deficit again this year. Battle lines were already being drawn today for a new fight over raising the country's borrowing limit. The government will not reach the current debt ceiling until the end of this year or maybe 2013. But House Speaker John Boehner went into a White House luncheon with the president, vowing to make it a prime topic now. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is encourage people on both sides of the aisle, on both sides of the Capitol, and at both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, to be honest with the American people and to be honest with ourselves, uh, to begin to tackle this problem in an adult-like fashion. Boehner announced Tuesday that he will again demand spending cuts only and no tax hikes to match any increase in the debt limit. But Congressman James Clyburn and other leading Democrats charged it was a made-up issue to help Republicans score political points. Clyburn said today, I hope the president will not get roped into this foolishness. Boehner took the same stance in last summer's protracted battle over the debt ceiling. A last-minute deal averted national default. And White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said the president warned lawmakers today against letting history repeat itself. We're not going to recreate the debt ceiling debacle of last August. Uh, it is simply not acceptable to hold the American and global economy hostage to one party's political ideology. Mr. Obama did not mention the debt issue during an event promoting his economic to-do list. We want to sustain momentum. And one of the ways that we can sustain momentum is for Congress to take some actions right now, even though it's election season, even though the, there's gridlock, even though there's partisanship, uh, take some actions right now that would really make a difference. But like Speaker Boehner, Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney raised the debt issue yesterday. He returned to it today in St. Petersburg, Florida, with the national debt clock behind him for emphasis. I find it incomprehensible that a president could come to office and call his predecessor's record irresponsible and unpatriotic and then do almost nothing to fix it and instead every year to add more and more and more spending. Republicans and Democrats alike say they don't expect action on the budget or the debt ceiling until after the election. To help us understand this latest political maneuvering, we're joined by Todd Zwillick, a reporter for PRI's The Takeaway on WNYC Radio, and Steve Dennis, who covers the White House for Roll Call newspaper. Gentlemen, it's good to have you both with us. Todd Zwillick, to you first. If nothing is likely to be done until after the election, why is the speaker bringing this up now? Well, the speaker spoke to this yesterday at a conference uh, here in Washington, which you were at, Judy. We all saw you moderating a, moderating a discussion there. Um, take the speaker at his word. He said, I don't feel like I have any other tools to get Washington serious about spending cuts other than the debt limit. Why would he say, it, say that? Because we've all seen this movie before. We remember how bruising it was last year when Republicans insisted on tying the debt limit to spending cuts, and it became a long, protracted fight, one that the president and the White House says they don't want to repeat. There's a political angle to this also as well, of course. The speaker does his right wing some favors, probably does the, the conservative base that Mitt Romney's also trying to satisfy some favors by saying we are dead serious about debt. This is our main charge against the president. It's an economic charge. It's a fiscal responsibility charge. And we're here to we're here to solve it. Steve Dennis, what would you I mean, what light can you shed on why now, though? Well, I think if you look at the context of the election, Considering that the debt limit isn't going to be, need to be raised probably until January, February of next year, this is about focusing the nation's attention on the debt, which is something Republicans would much rather be talking about. Um, and Mitt Romney obviously wants to be talking about. They want to have the issue of focus on debt and deficits, which rather is something the, the White House this week wanted to be talking about their new jobs packages. You know, they wanted to be talking about letting people refinance their homes. They want to be talking about small business tax cuts all these things that are sort of passing out goodies instead of, you know, dealing with a 
big barrel of pain, which is what's headed at the end of the year. We've got expiring tax cuts, we've got huge spending cuts, and we've got the debt ceiling increase. Those are sort of three, you know, legislative nuclear weapons all about to go off, and everybody's holding one of them hostage. But the fact that the speaker's talking about it now, Todd, Todd's will, like, does that mean something can be done about it in the near future? Something can always be done. Congress makes the laws. The president signs the laws. Sure, something can be done. Will it? Not until after the election. And in terms of the debt limit, maybe not in, until even after New Year's. When you saw Jay Carney there say, we're not going to do this again, you say, well, Mr. President, if the debt limit expires, you kind of are. Well, they have a little bit of power over this. Tim Geithner, the Treasury Secretary, said yesterday, essentially, that the Speaker's threat is largely hollow because we have some tools, and if the debt limit expires in late November or, or December, we, can, we, can, we have some tools within Treasury to extend things out. This may even come after New Year's, and maybe this won't come down to a debt limit showdown. Now, the Speaker says, we don't have to wait until the last minute. We can talk about this now. We can be responsible. Yes, Republicans want to have that discussion now. That doesn't mean that the President is going to take the Speaker's bait and have a debate all throughout the summer and into the fall over how and when to raise the debt limit and tie it with spending cuts? I don't think so. Well, let's talk just for a second, uh, Steve Dennis, about the substance of this. Mm -hmm. What the speaker is asking for, only spending cuts to match whatever the increase in the debt ceiling will be. You talk today, as I did to some deficit hawks, people who care about the debt and the deficit, and they say to do that is really, realistically very difficult. You stay away from defense, you've got to go to programs for the poor, education, uh, Medicare. Medicare. I mean, I mean, these are third rails, and, you know, uh, I think the, the real problem, the risk here that Republicans have is that, you know, they're having a hard enough time dealing with a sequester, which is $1.2 in spending cuts that kicks in at the end of this year, from last year's deal. How are you going to find new cuts? If they don't come cut? up with if, a new plan. Right. So how are you going to come up with new cuts for another $2 trillion increase? It's going to be very hard for them to do that. And, it, and it, the risk here is if you look what happened in Europe, they're forcing all these countries to do all this austerity, and those governments are falling. Austerity is pretty unpopular when you go to the people and say, oh, do you want to cut Medicare? It doesn't really work very well politically. So if the, de the, the, the job here for the Democrats, the president, is to go to, out to the folks and say, hey, uh, if you follow John Boehner's prescription, we are going to decimate programs you care about and take that to the election. Now, in the meantime, though, there is a real risk. People are starting to get nervous on Wall Street again. And there just is by the, ver the just, subject just being the raised. Just the possibility of a year-end fiscal train right. wreck. Ben Bernanke's worried about if this, all these three bombs go off at the same time, that the economy could go back into a recession very quickly. Uh, you know, if Wall Street starts thinking maybe they can't come up with a deal, uh, you know, that could be happening right around the elections. And, you know, that's a very volatile environment. We saw in 2008 when Wall Street gets nervous, you know, the, the politics can change really fast. Well, Todd Zwillick, you talked to folks on both sides of the aisle. Have the Republicans thought through that part of it? And we, as we noted, Mitt Romney is out on the campaign trail at the very same time raising the debt issue. Coordination there or a coincidence? Well, the Speaker's speech yesterday was scheduled for a long time. It was clear that Mitt Romney was eager to get off of other issues that, cap that capitalized the campaign last week. Gay marriage, for instance, he wasn't eager to talk about that. John Boehner certainly was not eager to talk about gay marriage. He would answer that question saying, marriage is between one man and one woman, but I'm here focused on the economy. You knew where John Boehner was going in terms of where he thinks the messaging should be. Democrats on the Hill, in terms of these fiscal bombs that are about to go off, think they have some leverage here. Steve mentioned the sequester, and that's $600 billion of domestic cuts, $600 billion of defense cuts. automatic cuts if they can't reach an agreement. Uh, which, which are going into effect January 1st, and everyone, including Republicans, signed on to. Democrats are sitting on the Hill and telling me, we're fine with that. Republicans, sure, we can undo those $600 billion in defense cuts if you want to. We can tie it to the debt limit if you want to. Let's talk revenue put a dollar of tax increases on the table. And in terms of the election, as the president and Mitt Romney go to the public with these two issues, the Democrats' message is, yes, we have a fiscal problem, but the other side won't even consider a tax increase for the richest among us. You've heard that refrain. I don't need to explain it. Yes, we have a fiscal problem. Let's talk about balance, not just spending cuts that we've already taken from the middle class. So, Steve Dennis, finally, what do we look for next? I mean, do we look for meetings to be scheduled to talk about this? No, I, I think we're, we're just 
just going to get the same posturing we've gotten over the past year as far as the big picture, as far as the fiscal year and cliff. The real question, though, they did talk also during this HOE summit, uh, they did talk about things they can get done in the next few months, things they need to get done in student loans, things they need to get done on the transportation bill. Maybe they'll take up one or two of uh, President Obama's to-do list, maybe a small business tax cut. You know, there are some things that are really small ball that maybe they can get done as long as they don't attach tax increases. And that was the message that Mitch McConnell brought in, the Senate Republican leader brought into the, to the meeting. So meanwhile, the attention focused on the debt ceiling, but you're saying there was, there was real practical work done as well. Uh, and there we, wasn't really a negotiating yeah. session, but I think the fact that it was cordial, that they came out saying we may be able to get some things done, uh, I think is a, is a positive sign for at least a few things sort of happening under the radar here. A good note to share. Steve Dennis, Todd Zwillick, thank you both. Pleasure. Great to be here.